Well, happy Tuesday, December 28th, 2021. I know what the date is today. I actually know the date. You know how we're in that in-between space of where Christmas, New Year's, what day is it? I know what today is because today is my daughter's birthday. My 18-year-old daughter, my baby. I no longer have babies in my house. So I know that it is December 28th. Hi, Diana, good morning, good morning. Hey, as you're coming in, tell me how your Christmas was. Tell me how you're doing over the, the holiday. How's it been? Are you losing track of time too? Yeah, I knew what today is. I was up all night. If you follow me on Instagram, go check it out later. I'm gonna do all the postings. I kind of go a little over the top when it comes to birthdays. I don't, I don't know. I think, I've, <laughs> good morning. I've inherited some type of strange addiction that my mom had too, and so, now that's what I do. Good morning, good morning. Hey, this morning we are going to do a quick teaching and I am gonna try and keep it quick because we have birthday plans going on over at the house. So again, if you check my Instagram, I'll share some of the pictures. Uh, this year for Sophia, it was her gag birthday. Uh, she, every, you know, every kid or, well, every kid, I only have two. Uh, my son had a gag birthday when he was 19. We did a Bob Ross theme birthday for him. And so this was her gag birthday year, so get ready. My middle turned 18, baby is 14. Okay, you're, you're coming up on it. My oldest is, is 20 and uh, gonna be 21 in June, six months away from him being 21. So it's crazy. Yeah, definitely have lost track of time. Let's take a few minutes to let everyone come in. I would love to know again where you are, how your Christmas went, and maybe even this more pointed question towards what we're gonna talk about today. How are you feeling? Like really take a minute. How are you feeling? If we are new to you, if I'm somehow showing up in your feed because somebody shared this, hi, I'm Elisa Keaton, the founder of Revelation Wellness. Uh, we are a nonprofit ministry for the last 10 years since 2011. Actually, I'm wearing my established 2011 shirt right now. And we talk all about embodying the gospel, not just having a faith, but living out our faith. And that sounds really good conceptually, but in practice, it takes practice. And just like a workout, just like a workout, you practice it, you discipline yourself because there's a delight in the discipline. We don't do the discipline feeling dutiful. If you do it out of duty or obligation, it will not last. It might get you going, it might give you a little buzz at the beginning, a little dopamine squirt, a little serotonin, norepinephrine, you'll get that little payoff, but you won't stick with it for the long haul if it is, feels dutiful. This is a delight for us. We wanna change your mind, give you a new mindset for who you are as a whole person, body, soul, spirit, with a mind and a heart, a will and emotions. And that takes a whole level of integration. So that is what we do here. Um, often we're a little bit too much Jesus for the world of fitness and we're sometimes a little bit too much body for the church. I feel the, the church has gotten this kind of not on purpose got it wrong, they just haven't known what to do. How do we talk about the body? Which is such a strange thing because Jesus had a body. It's actually the fact that his body was crucified for us, his body. The wounds that he took upon his body, the suffering, the hurt, the pain, everything he felt, he absorbed for us so that we could live a new life and not just a new life, but an abundant life, a life that is more and measurably more than you can ask or imagine. That takes practice. So this is a community where you are invited to practice with us. And as we move towards the new year, there is this resounding uh, agreement that we're all ready for something new, that we're all gonna practice something new. So let's talk today about what we need in order to, um, in order to have resolutions that stick. Yeah, I hear, I hear what you're reading. Body is achy from stress. Yes, you guys, stress. If I could sum it all up, that's really what we're after here is in this world, you will have trouble, Jesus says. In the world, you will have trouble. In the world, you will have stress. In the world, you will have worry. In the world, you will be tempted to, to make life about things that it's not about. You will have this tension, trouble, Jesus says, but... Take heart, 
I've overcome the world. Taking heart is what we do by gathering ourselves up as a whole person that has been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, by the sacrifice made. Take heart, gather yourself up. I love that in the scripture for what we know of Christmas is that Mary pondered these things in her heart when she was told you are carrying the, the savior of the world. She pondered these things in her heart. She took heart, she gathered it up and held on to it. And what the world does is try to fracture us into pieces. And that's exactly what worry, anxiety, and stress does. So we are a stressed out people right now. I mean, come on, come on. I, my bell is too far away. We are stressed out people. Our nervous systems are shot. And that's why we have our challenge, our clean hearting challenge. We're gonna clean out our hearts. We're gonna take heart. We gotta take inventory. We gotta clean it out. Because I, if you're anything like me, the last two years, you've been collecting some things. I've been collecting memorabilia. Like what life was prior to this. And I, I tend to ponder about that. Like, oh, I miss things. I, we haven't had an in-person event in two years. I'm dying over here. I'm happy for Facebook. I'm thankful for RevWell TV, uh, our challenge, everything. But I need some face-to-face -face real soon, which we will be getting back on the road in the new year. So praise God. But I'm prone to hold on to and kind of, kind of like the Israelites looking back at Egypt, I'm prone to do that too. I'm prone to just look and like, oh, remember when things were so much better. And that type of reminiscing about the past, which is rooted kind of in regret, not in celebration of what is and what is to come, that will weigh you down. That will anchor you. That will move you towards a more depressed state or a more anxious state because you're, you're like, you're ready for something to happen that will then catapult you out of the change when we already have change right here available in the power of the Holy Spirit. God with us. He's with us and he is not confused about this time. He's not stressed about this time. He, he understands our stress. So have compassion for yourself. It's normal that you do feel the stress, but the thing about stress is it comes and it should go. If it's constantly coming and you're absorbing and taking that into heart, you will be turning to food, drugs, substance, shopping, sex, people, power, possession to find your fulfillment. All right, so do me a favor as you are here right now. Would you give me a little New Year's Christmas present and hit share? Just hit share because many people need to hear this teaching about how to make New Year's resolutions that stick. Um, and that would help us to just reach people far and wide with the gospel because 74% of Americans are going to be looking to do something new in the new year. And of those 74% of people who make a New Year's resolution, 45.9% of them will be doing something with their health. It's the number one. This is the big show for fitness people. This is, our, this is the big dance for us. It's the new year and 45% of all resolutions, almost 50% of them have something to do with improving health. So would you hit share right now so that someone might be blessed to find the love of Jesus, the message of good news, this, this message of self-compassion, and there is trouble in the world. All right, so I just told you a little statistic that in 2021, so a year ago, a finder survey um, found that the American out of the American population, 74% of people were determined to do something new in 2021. So this is a year ago. I'm looking at a year ago. We look at the back of the year. 74% of people said, I am going to do something new in the new year. 45.9%, almost 50% of those people were doing based on something for their health. They needed to improve their health. Um, listen. I know there are things that I can do. I really believe, here's the thing about health, it's so interesting, because we get so busy, it just gets sidelined, when really it's the very foundation, health, which is the, another word is fit, it just means to be able. That's why we have disabled stickers or disabled license plates, it's because their health is weaning or waning right now, so you get disabled, but when you have health, you're able. Can I get an amen? That's what your health is for. That's what your body's for. That's what a health, mental health is for, that you think in line with ability and cognitive awareness of what you can do, 
more than what you can't do, that you have emotional health, that you don't suppress your emotions or aggress with your emotions so that you are able to show up to work and not light the room on fire with your anger or, um, or uh, acquiesce to bad things that are going on that you you know something's happening where it's not above the law people kind of get into these tactics and scary little places it's not healthy it's not able it won't withstand outward resistance so that's what health is for we want to remember that because people think that health is six-pack abs and tighter uh, thighs and a smaller waistline and that is not health i gotta get my bell someone i just i just i just I just need to, it's not health. That's physique, that's vanity, that's uh, something that's temporal, it will not last. And I can tell you that as a past competitor, I do not have the body I had today, I have today when I was 21 years old and leaning out and watching, counting every macro and calorie and dehydrating myself and hitting the gym for an hour and a half a day, sometimes a split. like. It was, yeah, I got it, didn't last. Kind of, but I don't regret it too because I learned what I needed to learn about that to go, vanity, it's fleeting. And it's actually kind of a waste of time and I didn't really love it. I liked it at first because our brain likes novelty, <clears throat> but then I hated it. I'll get that in a minute. <clears throat> okay, so 50% of people go, I gotta do something about my health. Awesome, we're here. Clean Harding Challenge, let's go, let's do it. Any donation amount gets you in. Out of those 74% of Americans who do these resolutions, after one week, 75% of the people are still going. 25% dropped out after a week. What's a fourth of the people go, nope, okay? I'm just giving you the, shooting out the straight uh, statistics right now. After two weeks, 71% are still going. That's pretty, not bad. Just a little 4% more have dropped out. After one month, 64% are still going. Again, this is a finder survey. I know you'll find different, um, different statistics dep depending on the, the pool of population that they ask. But I kind of went on the positive side. Like, wow, after a month, 64% of people still going. Not bad. That means 10% of the people dropped out. All right. Now, after six months... 46% of the people are still going with their resolution. In comparison, of those people who had similar goals but did not set a resolution, only 4% are still successful after six months. Do you get what this is saying? Resolutions are good things. I am here today to say they're good to have. I feel like we've, we're now beginning to poo-poo it and say, oh, those are for people who try and fail, so I'm not even gonna try. I am here to tell you it is not a bad thing. In fact, God ingrained it into us to desire new things. And as I said about me doing bodybuilding and lifting and competition, my brain liked the new thing. But because my approach was unrealistic, uh, not in line with my core values of who I am, it was not sustainable. And that's a big key takeaway for how something, a resolution we're gonna make that sticks with us. So I really wanna just first of all say, good on you for saying, I wanna try something new. That's a good thing. You have an enemy who wants you to feel shame about trying. And that's what keeps us from trying again, that compounding shame. Instead of shame off you, I say it right now, shame off of you. And stick with us here at Revelation Wellness because the reason you cannot make change, one of the big reasons, not the only reasons, but the reason you desire change and cannot do it, it's not the lack of willpower or lack of knowing what to do, Something in life has changed your structure and organization of your brain, and that thing is called stress, anxiety, and adversity, trauma, capital T or little t. And to be alive is to encounter trouble, trauma, capital T, little t. 
microaggressions all the time. And we're living in a society now at a time with microaggressions. You've got a phone that's always, someone's trying to get a hold of you or you're always feeling you have to be on top of what other people are doing. We have fast moving information. More is better is the, the uh, idea of the culture. When better is better. So we're all ver reverberating at this high level of stress. If you don't have disciplines and practices in place that say, I'm taking a break, I'm resting, I will not worry about this. I can feel this emotion, but I will trust the Lord with it. It's this renewing of your mind. And when you exercise, when you exercise, you help to restructure the brain. Meditation and exercise to this day, the most beneficial act that you can do that is equal to taking a drug. Meditation, being still, having quietness, silence, solitude, and moving your body, exercise, change, reorganize the organization structure of your brain in a way that now you can get back into making healthy decisions, healthy emotions, healthy choices. Can I get an amen? Come on. So do not despise new things. Don't despise them. Get, pick them up again, friends. Take heart. Come on. Some, I've got to talk to someone because I know there are some of you who are counting yourself out going, I don't even want to try. First of all, you're already projecting the fact that you're going to fail. And if you think you're gonna fail, you will. But you were made for new things. Don't despise the new things. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm sorry, last two years feel pretty wildernessy, feel pretty dry. I will make a way. But see, we go, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna feel like a failure. No, no, not gonna do it. That's for, no, not gonna do it. Make a way. Think something new today. Resolutions are part of this ingrained rebirth and renewal that God wants to do within the side of us. So don't despise him. I'm going to just say it over and over. Don't despise. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. God is saying, I want to do something new. I want to, do you want to do something new? I want to do something new. Do you want to do, come on, shake hands. Ezekiel 36, 26. And I will give you a new heart. God, this is God speaking through the prophet Ezekiel, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove from the, from the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Anxiety, worry, trouble, stress, putting too much confidence in what we see, it gives us a heavy, fleshy, calloused heart. But God says, put confidence in me. Seek first the things of me, what you cannot see. Resurrect your faith, resurrect your hope, resurrect your love, and I will put in you a new heart. And new hearts desire new things and do new things, and they have disciplines that are rooted in delight. I say no to some things because it is beneficial for me. Even though everything's permissible, I have to say no to some things because it's beneficial for me to have those boundaries in place. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24. This is Paul saying to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, right? Deceitful desires, desires that are about our flesh or about my six pack abs or things I really, really want that have no eternal value. And we are to be renewed in the spirit of our minds and to put on the new self, the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. Don't despise the new things. 
I, today's teaching, I think I'm going to teach again. I'm going to teach, listen to the podcast. I've got a few teachings coming because I know the New Year's coming. So again, I'm getting you ready, getting the choreography ready for the big dance because I want you to be ready as you move into this new year with some new things that God wants to do. Today, I just wanted to say, make the resolution. Make the resolution. But here's the thing about the word resolution. It comes from to resolve. When you resolve on something, you're adamant. You're adamant about it. Like, I'm doing this. Now, again, some of you get scared to do that. You're like, but if I do that and I don't, no, stop. Everyone, do you know this? We don't do that anymore. First of all, we got to get a mindset about what a healthy resolution is. I'm going to do another teaching on that because I'm not going to get it today. Today, I just wanted to tell you how to make the New Year's resolution stick. The first thing is you need to, re- to be excited about, I, I can do a new, th- God wants to do a new thing. You have to come into agreement that God is doing the new thing, that you're not doing the new thing. If you do the new thing, you will be in this, uh, the 4% that fall off right off. Or those who make no resolution, who have no change after six months, but those who do make a resolution, those who just say, you know, even those who say, I'm going to lose 40 pounds, but they make that the thing and they resolve to it. Even though they may not get the 40 pounds, they might have lost five pounds. See, and that's where you should go celebrate. There's a book called Tiny or Atomic Habits. Atomic Habits about tiny habits. Those little things. This is why it's important. Your resolution, I'm going to talk about this in the next teaching. It has to be realistic. Right? That's number one reason why people stop is it's not realistic. It's an unrealistic goal. But before we even talk about what kind of goals, we got to get excited about the resolve. My friend, uh, new friend, Jennifer Wagner, she wrote a book called Your Good Body. I highly encourage you to read it. Uh, she was a woman who was um, overweight, like a childhood, had obese, uh, not obese, but overweight, overweight, and then got over into 300 plus pounds. Um, and then she began to lose it by extreme restriction. It's kind of like a, a long story of a Biggest Loser uh, episode. And she lost it, but then she got super, um, super obsessive about things. And things were just not going well for her. And then she finally, like, it was really felt maddening. It's maddening. Can I get an amen? Like, she, she was getting the results, but, like, not feeling healthy, well, free, and so finally, she started just to come to the Lord with it. Like, what is this? I don't want to be 330 pounds anymore. And I don't want to be this 150 and feeling like I'm feeling. What is it? And she knew right away that the Lord just showed her, you need some resolve about who I am, what your body is for. Yes, to keep some disciplines in place because she knows she's prone to go back to some old behaviors. Yes, to some disciplines, but no to this obsessive compulsive desire for it to not be enough. So she had to get, and she used the word, I had to have resolve that I will not obsess or neglect, that I will walk this with the Lord, that it looks the way he wants it to look for me. And she said she, like every thought that ever came against her, she would just continue, she was adamant about it, resolved. No, I am not fat. No, I am not lazy. No, I, whatever it is, she just, she picked up her weapon and anything that came against her love, joy, peace, and compassion that Christ had for her, she had resolved to kill it. I've been reading in the book of Joshua right now that as, as Joshua goes and takes the new land, what does God say to him over and over? Devote to destruction your enemies. Be devoted to destruction. Devo- destroy your enemy. Destroy your enemy. Devoted to it. Because if you do not devote yourself to the destruction of the enemy, you will devote yourself to the things, to the devoted things, the, the treasures, the possessions, the six-pack abs, the youth, the whatever it is, the, the, the Instagram likes. Those are all just devoted things. God says devote that to destruction. What would it look like for you to be devoted to destruction of an enemy who tries to tell you, you're fat, you're ugly, you're worthless, or it's not enough, you need more, you're getting lazy, whatever it is, obsessing or neglecting. Be devoted and resolve 
to that resolution. And, and then you might go, well, Lisa, how do I do that? Well, this is your practical takeaway for today. Remember, your brain craves new things. It just does. You can try and suppress it, but you're made to desire new things, to try again, try, try again. I love, uh, you guys know I love the word um, uh, fail is the acronym for frequently attempting in learning. Frequently attempting in learning. Fail, go ahead, fail. Because when you fail, like legitimately it didn't work, what'd you learn? Okay, pick it up, take heart, try again. Oh, I failed. Nope, you were learning. Pick up, take heart, try again. Frequently attempting in learning. So how do you make resolutions that stick? Well, two things. Embrace suffering and expect a resurrection. Embrace suffering. Y'all, you cannot make a resolution to destroy your enemy that build, that thing in your desire, whatever that come, that thought that comes that says when you're stressed out and anxious, so you go to the pantry. Nope. This is why please do our challenges because we'll teach you physical practices of getting in your body. You have more agency than you are aware of. You have more authority than you access. But you have to get in your body because where did Christ choose to dwell? in you. He's in you and with you, Emmanuel. So you have got to be able to come to yourself so you can stay devoted to the destruction of the enemy. You can't theorize yourself into this. You actually have to practice yourself into it. And you cannot practice. You don't get better at um, playing the piano just by thinking about playing the piano, which actually it does have benefit Thinking, people who don't think about playing the piano and just practice playing the piano, this is actually a study. If you just practice, they get better because they physically practice. But if they couple that with physically practicing and thinking about playing the piano, seeing themselves playing the piece, they get exponentially better than just the people that just practice. And of course, infinitely better than those who do nothing. So we have to practice and we have to have a mindset. We have to get into our body to go, oh, I'm really craving right now. Okay, what did Elisa say to do? We're gonna, we're gonna take a breath. We're gonna ground into our body. I'm gonna put a be still and be loved on. I'm gonna go for a walk. I'm gonna put on a revving the word. You guys, all of our stuff at Revelation Wellness, all, everything about our challenge, everything, we're coming at you with meditations, devotions, workouts, the community, the coaching. I mean, it, you only can fail frequently attempt in learning if you choose not to learn anything. We're, we're like teaching all the time. So take the teaching. So embracing suffering. That whenever I have to fight an enemy, it sucks. Can I get an amen? <laughs> like, I'd rather not. It's a lot of work. It's exhausting. I feel the last two years I've been fighting off an enemy. We all have. That's why we're tired. But embrace the suffering. Remember the cross. Pray the cross. Embrace the suffering. When you are tempted, you are then on equal playing field with what Christ walked through. You are now needing this whole strength of the Holy Spirit that Christ needed as he went to the cross. When you are tempted, you are in good company. Do you understand me? This is powerful stuff. People go, why can't I change? Because you don't like suffering. <laughs> but that's so crazy because the reason you want to change is because you were sick and tired of suffering. And now your suffering is a new way. And people go, oh, I'd rather go back to Egypt where I knew how to do that suffering. No, stay forward, facing. Be devoted to destruction. So embrace the suffering. Embrace the suffering. Expect a resurrection. So when that moment comes and you want to quit and have that resolve to do whatever it is you're going to do, then you're going to embrace, get in your body, breathe, be resolved to fight the right fight, the enemy. And then you're going to expect God is doing something here. 
a resurrection's coming. You might look in the mirror and see nothing different, which honestly, it's not even about the mirror. Can I just say that? It isn't. But you will start to, as you start to care for your health, it's an inside out thing. It's an inside out. You'll start first to sleep better, have more energy, feel more clear headed, um, less pain. It all starts in this beautiful inner space. That's the stuff to ponder and take heart and hold on to that. Because if you hold on to the inner stuff that's yours inside your heart, what your heart is holding, and it's of clean substance, something that's excellent, noble, praiseworthy, and true, it's gonna work itself out your body. I promise you. A resurrection's coming. A resurrection's coming. I can't see it right now. But just because I can't see it doesn't mean I can't believe for it. A resurrection is coming. So how do you make a resolution that sticks? Today, your theology takeaway. How am I going to walk into the resolution that's going to stick this year? Embrace suffering. Expect a resurrection. Say it with me. I will embrace suffering and expect a resurrection. Now, embracing suffering is a practice, and that's why we are here. RevWell TV. If you're not a subscriber, go get it. We'll put the link here in the feed. It's totally free. Embracing suffering. Every time you, you go for a walk or do something you don't want to do, but you know it pays off, you're embracing suffering. And every adversity that comes your way, God has set it up. He's teed it up for you specifically, because if you embrace the suffering of it and expect the resurrection, you come to the other side and you go, oh my gosh. That ended up being for me and not against me. That taught me something. Even though I failed and I fell on my face, I learned something. I don't wanna go through it again, right? Like, like, I don't wanna do it again, but I also wouldn't take it back because I learned something. So, in closing, <laughs> make the resolution. Just today, make, just begin to make the resolution because God wants to do a new thing. So go ahead, take off all the weight of like, a oh, failure, don't, that you're already not devoted to, a, to destroying your enemy if you're worried about failing. God, I told you who he is and what he wants to do, a new thing, a new heart, new flesh, new spirit, new mind, new, 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 new. Every day he wants to renew you, renew you, because this world starts to clutter and defile us and, and uh, just muck us up. And his word cleanses us, but it doesn't just clean us to clean us. It cleans us to send us. Now go. Be of good courage today. Take heart. Overcome. Take some territory. Destroy an enemy. And remember, people are not the enemy. The enemy is the enemy. So we're going to need kindness, compassion, empathy. And we learn that through our embodiment skills here that we give you in all of our challenges, in all of our programming. Okay? All right. Embrace suffering, expect a resurrection. I'm going to come back. Um, actually, I'm going to do a listen to our podcast. If you follow us on our podcast, again, I'm going to, you're going to get some teachings in the next few days here as we prepare for the new year. Um, the, the things that your resolution should have, and I, I told you right away, it's got to be realistic. So don't, 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 you know, set it so high that you know you'll fail. What is realistic? And I, I mentioned that book, Atomic Habits, that starting small and celebrate it, it's beautiful. That is part of the kingdom. So I'll talk a little more practicals in the resolution. Today, I just wanted to say, do it, because you're made for it, and embrace suffering. We're going to help you do that, so stay with us. Join the challenge. Embrace suffering. Remember the cross. Remember who you, who you are and whose you are, and expect a resurrection. You hold that tension of embracing suffering and expect a resurrection, it's going to hold. And then these inside will be these little practices that I'll come back with more on like, hey, you know, keep it realistic. Keep a mindset. But embracing suffering, it's just not going to be avoidable. This is a choice, whether you expect a resurrection. All right. Did you have any questions? If I could answer any questions for you, I would love to do that. I'm going to pray. Jesus, thank you for Facebook Live. Thank you uh, for our breath today, that we're here, that we desire you. I pray, God, uh, that you would give each person here a vision of who you are, 
of sense of peace, of your presence, your delight, how much you love them, that you are not like the world. You do not accuse or you shame to teach us your kindness and you are firm with boundaries for us. You're calling us home as a father. God, I pray as we move into this new year, you gather up your children, bring them in, Lord. Bring them next to you and close to you to hear your heartbeat, to do what you want to do. God, bring change into this world through us as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a link up above to sign up for the clean hearting. So you can just click that link and go. Any donation amount gets you in. Any donation amount at all. We would love $10. Give the best you can because whatever you give, you can help for others who can't give. Um, I think you can give as little as a dollar. So uh, if you don't have a dollar, my goodness, you let us know. We'll take care of you. But give what you can. This is how, as a nonprofit ministry, we keep the lights on. Our fundraising, our donors, you help us. Um, if you're a monthly partner with us, thank you so, so, so much. You truly, truly keep us on mission. I'm on an antidepressant that keeps me from getting too emotional. Yeah, I found it also makes it hard to get resolute about. Wow, that is so, so, yes, Nona. Nona, what a very good observation. Really, really good. Man, I feel that for you. Um, I would encourage you, Nona, one, stay in, you know, under the care of your physician. Let them know your desire. Like, I, I, yeah, I'm, I want to feel things. Talk to them about that. And mostly I would say, Nona, and anyone else who feels like Nona, I'm feeling you right now, I pray that you would, would uh, pray to the Holy Spirit. Listen, he can, he can override medication that you want to feel, that you want that courage to feel, because if you're going to feel the good, you have to feel the bad. Um, I would encourage you to talk with your physician about that with the medication and how and when you're ready to, to try that. But yes, the antidepressants, there's nothing wrong with anti, antidepressants and anxiety medication. I do believe, though, they're there for when it's like, it's it's 911 it's 911 i think they're they're there but at some point when the hemorrhaging or the triaging can go down you can take it off so you take the bandage away so that you can heal it's for people it's at different times of their life they're fantastic they are not to be shamed if you have them or are using them but yes they will numb things down so the full expression of life is harder to fill so we pray for you nona Holy Spirit, we pray Nona would have, uh, that you would break through and give her a taste of feel and joy today. And then Lord, that she would walk in wisdom as to what to do next as she cleans her body, heart, and mind uh, to be a fully renewed woman in your, in your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Thank you, Nona, for saying that. And you're not alone. There's so many people. And honestly, if it's not an antidepressant we use, we're, you can use um, food, and food becomes that numbing out thing. So you no longer even taste food anymore, and so you have to taste more food to try and taste food. It's the same with alcohol. It's the same with anything. Anything we do to alter the chemicals in our brain to try and level the pain receptors, we it, it blows out everything. So this we're all in it with you, Nona. Like. People are using things, whether it's an actual drug or a substance of food itself right now, to try and just get through the times we're in. That's why we're going to clean our heart. We're going to clean our heart. Yeah. So, I feel you. Okay. Hit share. If you haven't shared and if this teaching was uh, encouraging to you, felt like someone needs to hear this too, and you don't want to be alone in this, and that we want to see new things happen in this new year as well, but in a different way, would you hit share? Okay, thanks you guys. Um, sign up for the challenge. Sign ups close on January 6th, so a week from Thursday. You got like nine, seven days left. Just don't wait, don't wait. So many people wait and then it closes and then they try to get in and it's just as hard to do. Um, so don't wait, go give your best. Pray about how much you can give. Bless someone else. Uh, you can also donate for someone else and it'll just get sent to them and they can opt in or opt out. So if they choose not to do it, well, thank you for your donation, but it's a great way to just get it into someone and be like, here, I, I signed you up and they can choose whether or not to do it. 
So you can do that, and you can also give on the behalf of someone in, mem in memory of. Um, we love that. We start on the December, January 10th. You'll get daily emails for 21 days, a devotional, some action items to do to clean our hearts, and some practices of embodiment, <sighs> getting back in our heart and our mind, our choices, wills, and emotions, and, and that will happen for 21 days. You get a movement calendar for 21 days, beginner and advanced, all bodies, all shapes, all, all of our movement is built on compassion and joy. And I tell you, we get so many testimonies of people who hated working out and then they loved working out because it's a completely different mindset of what health and your body is for. And it'll begin to build up that adamant spirit in you to say, nope, this is what my body's for. This is how I will choose to live. The world cannot assign on me any more of its curses or um, assignment of slavery to my body. So you'll get the movement calendar, um, ongoing coaching with me and our coaches back on our Facebook page. All right, that's it. I'm out. I got to go celebrate Sophia. I get to go celebrate Sophia. I'll see you guys in all the places. Uh, next Tuesday, same time, 10 a.m. And then also check out the podcast, Revelation Wellness Healthy and Whole. Make sure you subscribe because then it'll get sent to you every time we give, put out new teachings and new information, okay? You guys have a great day. Peace.